Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Now in the last lecture I tried to discuss the industrial fermentation process and the material analysis. Now when we discuss the industrial fermentation process we have come across the several things. We have come across the bioreactor. Bioreactor is the vital uh, uh, things because where the biochemical reaction take place and I told you that uh, main issue is that how to maintain the sterility of that particular process so that our desired organism can grow in that particular environment and to get the desired amount of product. And uh, for doing so, I have already shown you in the last lecture that different, the different type of control uh, the controllers are used. Now, in this lecture, we are going to discuss the process control of the biochemical processes that what are the different process control that we use in the biochemical process. As you know, the chemical and biochemical industry, both uh, the different type of process control is required to give the optimum environment uh, so that we can maximize the product formation. So, uh, this, uh, this particular lecture, uh, we, uh, his main purpose is to what are the, give you the detailed information, what are the different control system we use, how, we, how it uh, function and all this information I try to share with you. Now, first let me, uh, let me tell you that process control parameters that involve in the, in the, in this uh, bio process, they maintain the optimum conditions for product formation in the complex environment in a bioreactor required the control and measurement of at least the few parameters that I told you, suppose uh, we know that uh, your organism, they are very uh, sensitive to temperature, the environment, the temperature, pH, dissolved oxygen, that plays very important role, am I right, if it is the aerobic fermentation process. So, that you have to measure. The, so, to maintain that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, what are the different control systems required? Almost all fermenters having the pH, temperature, dissolved oxygen control. The, the maintenance of the sterility in a fermenter impose a severe limitations on obtaining online measurement of the fermentation parameters. So, whenever we draw the sample, whenever do anything um, in the system, we always consider the sterility of the process, the how we can but draw the sample also. I can, I can give the, a typical example, suppose this is a, this is a fermenter and this is, you know, suppose this is you are drawing the sample. So, what we basically do, we have here suppose here we have ball bulb and here is there is the live steam line, you know, steam line, you know, live steam line. The first we pass the steam in this uh, pipeline just to ensure the line is 100 percent sterilized. Then we draw the, uh, draw the, uh, this, uh, 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 we open this ball bulb and, and take it in the test tube and then close it and again we draw, we pass the steam. So, that uh, just to make the ensure that pipeline is sterilized. So, you know that sterility part we try to maintain, maintain in this particular um, uh, fermentation process. Actual the process control strategy of bioprocess are very primitive in comparison to the chemical industry due to lack of online sensor and reliable mo uh, models. So, uh, this is another uh, uh, problem that we have. Now, let us, uh, let us uh, see that what are the different operational parameters that we have in the bio process. Now, we can divide it into three different categories. So, one is called physical parameter, another called chemical parameter, another is the biological parameter. Am I right? Now, physical parameter means what? The first parameter that come in picture that is the temperature and second parameter is the bioreactor pressure because what pressure is maintained because usually our biological system operated close to one atmospheric pressure. 
hesitation speed. We cannot increase the hesitation speed too high because if we, we mostly we use the mechanical hesitator, if we increase the hesitation speed, it gives some kind of searing effect. And if there is searing effect, that will hamper the growth of the microorganism. Then gas flow rate, because the what we call air flow rate, that we important the total volume that is very important. Then total volume we also monitor that uh, how we maintain the uh, monitor the total volume. We can monitor uh, by, uh, either by using uh, watch glass or by using some kind of sensor. Sensing device nowadays available that uh, from that we can we can we can find it out. The feeding rate we can find out that that power input uh, we can calculate and the foam that is the uh, that the, uh, that is the, the things that is uh, the parameters we have uh, we we have in this uh, fermentation system then um, then other things is the reactor weight the feeding tank weight the cultured viscosity gas holding up and the gas mixing pattern so these are the this is this undergo in the physical techniques and chemical we have ph and dissolve oxygen and another things we have dissolve carbon dioxide redox potential we have out out gas analysis substrate product enzyme activity volatile compo compounds conductivity uh, biomass composition metabolites profile and the mineral ions so different parameters we can estimate in the bio process and biological we have cell morphology cell viability optical density cell dry weight and uh, cellular composition specific growth rate specific substrate consumption rate and the specific product formation rate then uh, we have uh, we have oxygen uptake rate carbon dioxide production rate respiratory quotient then we have growth inhibitor protein dna rna atp atp and amp that uh, so, so uh, these are the different parameters uh, we can uh, we, we can maybe use for the operating the different bioprocesses Now, let us see that uh, how we monitored the physical parameters like you know that uh, temperature let us say for example, that is the we use the resistance thermometer, thermometer or thermistor because I, I told you it is basically the bimetallic am I right. Now, we know the expansion characteristics of the metal that uh, depends on it varies on the uh, depends on the conductivity. Am I right? So, so depending on this uh, conductivity of the of the uh, metals, the expansion and contraction that takes place, and from that we can monitor the temperature. This is what we call a resistance thermometer, and uh, but, but here we don't use the mercury thermometer. The pressure we use the manometer. Manometer is very very uh, small technique that you have. We know this manometer. This we put the liquid. And suppose this is connected with your rea uh, the, the reactor that you know that uh, this is the reactor that we have, and then this pressure difference that we will find out from that we can calculate what is the pressure inside the reactor that we can we can calculate. Then hesitator shaft power, this is a watt meter that we can we can uh, or strain gauge we can use. Hesitator speed can be uh, estimated by using tachometer because in our day to day life we, we also use we have seen that in our in our car and other things we uh, if we want to find out the, what is the speed of the uh, the wheel that we can find out with the help of tachometer. Foam is the rubber sheet electrode that is used and gas flow meter we have already told rotameter is used and rotameters we have a flow I will discuss in details and liquid flow rate is the magnetic inductive uh, 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 flow. But here I want to point out in the biochemical industry we use the peristaltic pump. Now, what is peristaltic pump? Peristaltic pump is a uh, uh, kind of you know uh, that you know you have uh, kind of uh, that you know uh, that uh, that uh, that you have this, this rod is there and here you what you do you put a pipe around this and it ro rotates like this and uh, it follow the principle just like a, a stopper you know that we have uh, we have in a stopper what you do we press it 
to take the air out and when we, when they immerse in the water the, with the we release it then with the vacuum the the water will suck into the tube that you know so you know this is like this so when this shaft move then it press this tube this is mostly made the main of silicon tube silicon tube so you know that uh, so for when you press it 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 takes the air out and then it take air this way then it creates a partial vacuum here so that that if it is uh, connected with uh, some kind of water tank or liquid tank then water will suck in and why we, why it is used in this biochemical process because nothing is exposed to the atmosphere everything remain inside the pipeline so we can maintain the sterility very easily viscosity maybe if we measure with the help of viscometer we have we know the brookfield viscometer is largely used turbidity is used by turbidometer and uh, turbidometer and uh, colorimeter is a little bit different that turbidometer we uh, is the, the the od we determine on the basis of uh, that you know scattering of the uh, par the light particles like the, suppose uh, there is the particles there that your your light will be scattered like this and you know that when you have you have detected here this is the light source we have here then um, uh, we find out how much of light is penetrating this from that we can find out what is the density of the cell present in the sample now this is how the resistance thermometer looks this is uh, the this is the uh, this is the sensing elements and this is the lead support sheet and mounting thread and connecting lead the, uh, they are also called the resistance temperature detector which are used to measure the temperature the operate on the uh, on the measurement of principle that materials elements resistance changes with temperature as i pointed out the resistance changes with respect to temperature that we measured the concentrated of length uh, of fine wire wrap around the ceramic and glass core and um, rdt wire comprises of pure uh, material typically platinum nickel and copper rdt is uh, element is hard fragile and they are often housed uh, in a protective probes so this is the this is an rdt means resistant temperature detector next is the foam control next is the foam control which is with a common feature of any biochemical industry foam formation and as a why why it is very much required because you see that uh, that in the fermenter uh, so suppose this is the fermenter and and if you have foam formation and i i told you that uh, here you have mechanical seal now if you allow the foam to build up it will enter the mechanical seal and rupture the mechanical seal and if you rupture the mechanical seal then all air will enter into the system and spoil the system so foam control is the anti foam sensor are used to control the foam uh, in the fermenter anti foam system is foam contact in the rubber sheet electrode and uh, electric circuit actuated a solenoid valve to allow the passage of sterile anti foam agent into the reactor so there is a kind of, what is solenoid valve solenoid valve is a electrically controlled valve so if uh, as soon as that you know that uh, this sensor the senses then is go to the here sensing is there so by it will uh, it will immediately that uh, it will it will open this uh, this uh, solenoid valve and put the anti foam oil into the reactor and when it puts in the reactor this foam will be subside and if a foam is subside then it will not affect your mechanical seal at all a, a deflection tuff is provided to ensure the uniform distribution of the anti foam agent the effect of anti foam agent is supplemented by centrifugal effect of the foam baker the amount of anti foam entering the fermenter is usually controlled by a timer in the circuit um, to the solenoid valve example of the anti foam uh, agent include the castor oil fatty acid alcohol ester paraffin oil and silicon oil vegetable or animal wax etc i can i can tell you that uh, in our uh, in our 
day to day life if you look in the kitchen that uh, when we cook anything that uh, we particularly cook pulses we find lot of foam formation is there and uh, we heat the pulses in the water we will and to subside the foam we add some kind of oil so similarly in the fermentation industry we we can we use different type of oil maybe vegetable oil may castor oil uh, we have paraffin oil silicon oil vegetable oil but you know that uh, the type of oil we use is varies from the industry to industry now rotameter because rotameter is kind of float you know that you can see here that this is the float this is gravity float eh? so when you when you pass the you are passing your air you throw this so it make a you know that uh, that you know pressure so rotameter is the most widely used variable uh, area of flow meter the tapper uh, glass tube with smallest diameter at the bottom tube contains the freely moving fluid the rest on a top of at the uh, at the base of the tube and when the fluid is flowing fluid rises until <coughs> its weight is balanced and by the up thrust of the fluid the fluid reaches a position equilibrium and its position then indicated in the rate of flow the rate of rate, the flow rate can be read and adjusted in the scale which is often which is in a glass tube the main advantage of the rotameter is that suppose you increase the air velocity then flow rate is increases then your flow rate will go rise and this is the linear scale am i right so you can easily monitor that at different flow rate that were so you can control your flow rate very easily that is why the rotameter is used in the fermentation industry for controlling the flow of the fluid now that we are talking about the equilibrium state the force balance on a bob is written in the following expression fd plus fb equal to w what is fd is the drag force fb is the balance uh, force of the float and w is the weight of the float so you know that uh, this should be equal to this under equilibrium condition this should be equal to this and by definition all form of force term can be expressed in the following uh, form the fd equal to cd a a b into rho f u m squared by 2 fd can be expressed like this and w is the this is the is the weight so this is how we can find it out the rotational viscometer which is used for the uh, viscosity of the fluid uh, particularly we know that uh, um, that uh, brook hill viscometer that is used for the measuring the uh, viscosity of the fluid that uh, determination of the viscosity of the fermentation broth rotational viscose may be made up of two part one that rotates another that remains stationary usually the motor drive the measuring bob and the and the sample cup stands still the torque required for turning the measured bob against the fluid as the viscous force is measured the viscosity is proportional to the motor torque online measurement is difficult now another thing is the turbidity meter i i i try to explain the turbidity meter because uh, this is we know that uh, principles of colorimeter uh, what is the principle of colorimeter suppose this is a light source this is light source and we 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 keep a solution here and uh, we we pass a particular wavelength of light and we measure the intensity of light here you know am i right this is the uh, detector and this is the light source a particular well wavelength or we find out we uh, through scanning we find out that what wavelength you have maximum absorption and that wavelength we do that in case of colorimeter but in case of turbidometer what we do this is the, this is the, that so in case of colorimeter it is due to absorption light absorption now here is not absorption the part is the, the organism is this particle so you know light will scattered you know it will strike here it will strike here like this if the density is small is that you know less light will penetrate through this tube so your light density measurement here will be less so here the term turbidity 
is used to describe the cloudy or milky appearance of the liquid or solid media. This turbidity is caused the sus due to suspension of particles like sludge, limestone, yeast or microorganism. It is based on scattering or ab absorption of light by the uh, suspended particles. The transmission that uh, transmitted intensity can be determined by the beard lambert equation and that i t equal to i 0 into 10 to the power minus k into l c, where k is the molar turbidity coefficient of the solution. This measured intensity of transmitted light is a function of the concentration of the dispersed phase. So, this is this is how we measured the how much light uh, has been um, emitted that you know that we measured by this uh, turbidity. This indicates the concentration of cells present in the uh, in the particular uh, media. The then question comes these are all physical parameters. Then let us come to the chemical parameter. We have pH, I told you the pH probe is used and for pH monitoring. Now, whenever you, you, you use any kind of pH probe, first we shall have to calibrate. The calibrate with the st standard buffer, with the, with the st standard buffer. So, we, you, we calibrate that, then we put the sample and we find it out. The redox potential also measured the uh, kind of oxidation reduction potential of the liquid dissolved oxygen probe. We measured with the help of dissolved oxygen DO probe. The dissolved oxygen dissolved carbon dioxide by carbon dioxide but exit gas analysis can be done by paramagnetic analysis of plate ionization detector and mass spectrometer. And liquid stream measurement by HPLC mass spectrometer and enzymatic biosensor that is used for liquid stream measurement. Suppose I want to measure the how much glucose is there, we use the some kind of glucose sensor just to find out how much glucose is there in the outgoing liquid. Now, pH probe that uh, take the instance the pH is a logarithmic measurement of the number of moles of uh, uh, moles of hydrogen and per liter. So, pH how we can write pH equal to minus log into hydrogen ion concentration am I right. So, this is what is written there. The pH probe is measured the pH by measuring the voltage or potential difference of the solution in which it is dipped. So, for whatever that you know this kind of device we have are uh, uh, either mostly we use the potentiometrical. The potentiometrical means voltage difference is comprised of two electrode, one is glass electrode which is silver alloy electrical wire submerged in a neutral solution of potassium chloride all content inside the thin bulb and made from a special glass containing salts metal such as the sodium or calcium. Reference electrode which also a silver alloy electrical wire suspended in a solution of potassium chloride content inside the same uh, special glass bulb. So, this is uh, how uh, this uh, pH probe looks and this is the, this is how it is there that you know this is the filling solution, this is the electrolyte that we have and you can see this is the electrolyte that this is the plastic tubes and this is the uh, electrolyte solution saturated KCL solution and here you have uh, the silver wire coated with a, a GCL and this is the electrode to electrodes we have and this is the this is the porous uh, porous uh, uh, glass and this is the when you touch the liquid then you sense here and measure the, the pH of the solution and this uh, re reaction is like this that uh, H2O is the hydrogen ion plus OH ion the aqua solution. Now, pH probe how you can calculate this uh, uh, this uh, potential we can uh, the E uh, that potential difference equal to E uh, 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 E cell equal to E 0 minus R T divided by N F L N K E. K is the equilibrium constant am I right. If you know the equilibrium constant of that particular uh, that uh, ion conversion process this is called Nart's equation on the basis of we can find out the what is the voltage that we have this is how it pH probe is function. Now, dissolved oxygen probe 
it looks like this. This is the membrane, this is the cathode uh, which is made of gold and the anode, this is made of silver and this is the electrolyte that we have. <coughs> and we measured on the basis of amperometrically we measure it. So, your, your pH we measure on the basis of potentiometric and this we measure on the basis of amperometric. Amperometric means with the help of micro ammeter. Now, the above phenomena if you look at can be measured by current to voltage diagram. This is uh, this is like this, this is negative balance. We, we can have this kind of uh, structure that we correlation we have the the negative voltage applied to the cathode is increased the current current increases initially but soon it becomes saturated the when the negative bias voltage is further increased the current output of the electron increases rapidly due to the other reactions mainly now one thing i want to tell here uh, how we calibrate this to dissolve oxygen probe first in the fermenter or well, suppose this is the do probe first we we sparge nitrogen and just to um, uh, drive all the oxygen out and when your monitor shows uh, that uh, your result is constant that we adjust to zero and then we this is replaced by air and you will find the dissolved oxygen concentration increases and when this constant the number is constant then that we fix as 100. So, your scale runs in, in between 0 to 100 and 100 stands for the saturated dissolved oxygen concentration. Suppose, the reading is 90, 90 means 90 percent, 90 percent means if you have 0.9 into saturated dissolved oxygen concentration, DO that is saturation, that concentration. So, if we have any kind of chemical uh, log book, we will find the table where we will find at different temperature, what is the saturated DO concentration. So, if you know that, if you know your temperature of operation, if you know the dissolved oxygen concentration, so you can easily find out the what is the DO concentration. This is how it monitored, this is uh, this is how it is done, I am not going in details. The similarly, we can find out the carbon dioxide uh, probe for that, uh, that uh, how we can monitor. This is, this is uh, the infrared lamp detected the wave of light through the tube and filled with air and IR light detector is used which is measured the amount of IR light thus it is. So, this is like this IR lamp is there and you find out where gas in and gas out and this is the detector from the detector we can find out what is the concentration that we have. Now, this is the uh, oxidation reduction uh, potential that we have which is measured by the tendency of the chemical substance to oxidize or reduce to another chemical substances. Sometimes it is very much required in case of fermentation process. The uh, concept of OPR electrode and the reference electrode similar to the pH probe. So, pH probe uh, and uh, this uh, sometimes uh, uh, we, we have both the with the, uh, the pH probe club with this uh, with the oxygen reduction potential, but both the thing oxidation reduction potential and pH probe from the same probe sometime we estimated. The same principles more or less we use here. Now, this is the automated uh, process control system that we have uh, that is used in the uh, fermentation industry. Now, if you look at uh, the scheduling, supervision and automation control in modern bioprocessing is done by advanced uh, process control system where all functions are um, implemented in software. Now, I want to I, I want to tell here here that you know that uh, um, uh, most of the industry they have pneumatic control system. Pneumatic control means special regulating system. So we can we can have a control modules uh, that you know from that we can we can have all the all the information that we have. That as for example, this is the production tank we have. Am I right? And this is this is the storage and processor. This is the seed tank that we have. This is storage and processor. This again, this is the seed tank, and this is the inoculation preparation. This is the compression filter. This is substrate preparation. This is the energy supply. This is the uh, the cell uh, separation and disruption. This is the product separation, product processing, waste processing. So these are the different uh, units we have. So we have different control units we have. So 
we require all the all the control uh, system for the different uh, phases we use that the main purpose of bio uh, bioprocess control attributes the handling of offline analysis offline means we take the material out and then analyze and receive and uh, scheduling and uh, parameter estimation uh, the simulation and prediction and optimization so um, we monitor from outside we take the sample i can i can give the example of online uh, that you know that uh, uh, we have we have two type of uh, analytical system we have we have online and offline as for example that uh, suppose in a reactor i can I, I can explain that you know like this suppose in a reactor if we wanted to have some kind of online analysis how we can do that how we can do the online analysis so what we can have we can have a pump here so here here we can have some kind of you know this this is a you so you can uh, you can have a bypass line here so you can you can connect it with like this so 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 here that i hope that it is not written properly so let me let me tell you the, you draw the sample with the help of pump it goes to the analyzer like this then this is this is a control environment you pose some kind of chemicals then suppose you have colorimeter or spectrophotometer spectrophotometer or let us assume this is turbidometer turbido turbidity meter okay so uh, we can we can we can easily find out that what is the cell density and this information is connected with this pump another pump here that uh, we we set the pump in such a way if the turbidity cross such a limit then this pump will be on and take the material out from the system this is the how we can do the online monitoring system now this we can do it offline you can draw the sample out and analyze here in the we have you have turbidometer and in the turbidometer we can find out and then on the basis of uh, offline analysis you can draw the you can take the material out so two type of analyzing device we have one is online and another is offline for the industrial development the central objective of the computer uh, control is to realize the economic interest in uh, assuring the high operational stability process reproducibility and increased product yield together with maintaining the rigorous safety so this is the this is the main purpose what why we required this automatic control with the industrial purpose we uh, now uh, uh, now uh, most of the industry they operated uh, automatically because their manpower requir requirement in the process drastically reduced because uh, we have seen that i when i discuss the batch process and continuous process we have seen that in case of continuous process our productivity is more high and not only that uh, that you know the manpower requirement for the operation of the continuous process is one tenth as compared to the batch process so this is how this control system plays very effective role in case of biochemical industry so in this particular lecture i give you the overall idea that what are the different uh, control the control system we have mostly it can be divided into three different ways one is physical another is chemical and biological and there are different parameters because all parameters it is not possible to discuss in this lecture the depending on the your 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 interest you can do that as for example suppose you want to monitor the glucose concentration in the fermentation broth we can use the glucose sensor and you can find out when the glucose concentration uh, cross after certain limit you take the material out the or you know you can use some kind of product sensor i can i can i can the, you can find out that how much product is formation is there from that you can uh, when the product uh, the, uh, i i can give the example of uh, that cell mass concentration can be estimated with the help of turbidity meter and when your uh, your your od value reach up to a certain level that you know mm, then you 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 ensure that your cell concentration reach to the desired level then you take the material out this is how we can operate the system and we have different type of uh, control unit we have we have temperature control we have ph control we have bio control 
we have we have um, uh, that uh, uh, agitated speed control, we have anti foam oil we can control uh, uh, the different type of uh, control system we use to make the system uh, uh, operative and uh, to, uh, to make proper environmental condition and desired conditions so that we can maximize our product formation. Thank you very much.